In this video, we will use lemma 2.21 to convert the following context-free grammar into a pushdown automaton. So our grammar is has variable e and rules e goes to left parenthesis e right parenthesis e goes to e plus e e goes to e star e or e goes to a. So those are our four rules. So let's set up our PDA. So remember our PDA is going to have at least three states. It's going to have Q start, Q loop, and Q accept, which will be our only final state. It will also have any states that we need in order to convert the shorthand notation of passing more than one symbol to the stack into our more accepted notation wherein we only push one symbol at a time. So we will uh, blow out those states as them. So remember the first thing that we have to do, step one, is to initialize the stack to contain the bottom of stack symbol, which we usually use dollar sign for, as well as the start symbol. Okay, so we already need to introduce a new state in order to handle this. Um, and so let's just call that state Q3. Okay, and so what are we going to do? By reading nothing from either the input or the stack. First thing, we want the bottom of stack symbol to be on the bottom. So we're going to push that first. And then we're going to push our start symbol. In this grammar, our start symbol is E. It's our only variable. So reading nothing, we're going to push an E on top of that bottom of stack symbol. Okay. Now we go into step two and we have three cases. So case A is when the top of the stack contains a variable. And remember what we're going to do is we have our um, delta function where we go from Q loop by reading no input, but looking at um, this variable on the top of the stack. And we're going to go back to Q loop and we're going to push W. And what is W? Um, w is where we have a rule A goes to W. So A is a variable and A goes to W and W is a string. So our rules here are going to be um, these rules. Okay, so let's handle them each one at a time. So uh, if I have E on the top of my stack and I want to handle this first rule, um, parenthesis, left parenthesis, E, right parenthesis, Remember that I have to push things um, basically backwards, right? If my variable read from left to right is left parenthesis E, right parenthesis, um, I want to be able to read it off the stack in that order, so I actually need to push it from right to left. Okay, so from Q loop, um, we'll, we'll number our states later. Let's just get them in here. Okay, so I need to start that rule. Um, I'm going to read no input, but I am going to read E from the top of the stack. And I'm going to push the thing that's rightmost in that string, so the right parenthesis. Okay, after I've done that, I'm going to stay in this path and push the rest of the symbols by reading nothing from either the input or the stack. So now I push E. Here, on my way back, I'm going to push the left parenthesis there. So that'll push that entire string um, in the order that we need it. If we read um, an E, this is really not clean. Let's make it cleaner. If I read okay. So that handled our first rule. Um, let's handle the rule with plus. So I'm going to kind of go way out here. Remember plus is E plus E, so I need two additional states to handle that. Okay, so if I read no input, but I have an E on the top of my stack, I can also push, I'm going to push the rightmost thing. And then now by reading nothing from the stack, because we've already started on this path, we're pushing this one rule. 
I had a plus in the middle. And then I'm going to come back to Q loop by pushing an E. Okay, so that handled our second rule. Let's flip back. Okay, so we also have E star E. So let's make another one of these. Again, two states. You're gonna zip off this way. Uh, we read no input. We read an E on the top of the stack. So then we push the rightmost E. Then we push the middle symbol. It's a star. And then we push the leftmost E. Whoops. So we have epsilon, epsilon, E. Okay, we've handled three of our four rules. So now we need to handle E goes to A. Luckily, uh, we only have one symbol to push there. So we can handle it um, in one transition. So if we have nothing, we're reading no input, we read E on the top of the stack, we can also push an A. Okay, so that handles all of our four rules in case A, where the top of the stack contains a variable. So now let's move into case B, where the top of the stack contains a terminal. So remember what we're going to do here is the actual matching. Um, we're going to read a terminal from the, or read a symbol, yes, read a symbol from the input match it against a terminal on the top of the stack, and we're basically now just popping things off the stack. Okay, so for that one, we're gonna go back to Q loop, but we're not going to add anything new to the stack. We're not gonna push any new symbols. Okay, so um, for each case there, I can uh, read a left parenthesis in the input, a left parenthesis from the stack, and push nothing. I can do the same thing for a right parenthesis, what other symbols? We had plus, we had star, and we had A. And is that everything? I think that's everything. Just double checking here. Yeah, that looks like everything. Okay, so that's handled all of case B. Uh, so now we're in case C. KC in the top of the stack contains the empty stack marker, okay, so the dollar sign. And when that happens, we're going to transition over Q, except it means we've emptied all of our stack. We're going to do this by reading an epsilon, um, yes, reading an epsilon from the input, reading a dollar sign from the stack, and pushing nothing to the stack. Okay, and remember that the only time we can really enter the accepting state and actually accept is when we read all of our input and we have emptied our stack. Okay, why are both of those conditions? Um, emptying the stack is clear. The only time we can take this transition is when we only have the dollar sign on the top of the stack, which means our stack is empty. Um, and why do we have to read all of our input? Well, once I enter Q accept, if I have any more input to read, the machine can't make a transition. And so remember, with non-deterministic machines, that's equivalent to going to a reject state. Okay, so we would not be able to stay in Q except there's no transition we could make on the remaining input, and so we would reject. Okay, so this is a PDA for that grammar, and we could fill in these state numbers if we wanted to. Q5. Um, it would be really helpful if we were writing a formal definition, which is a good exercise, uh, but it takes a while, so we're not going to do that in this video. Okay, But you should be able to um, go from the state diagram to a formal definition. Okay.